Hey y'all, welcome back to Living Out Loud with Mona Cole. On today's show, I am going to be chronicling through my experience of visiting Cuba. Um, I had a chance to visit the lovely island um, July 2018, and I just never really got around to getting the video and everything put up. And so now I'm just ready to get all that and that experience out there and share it with you all. So I want you to all make sure that you subscribe down below to the channel so that you always stay updated on um, all the different shows that are coming out as a reminder. So you will always have something to be able to watch that's interesting around the areas of lifestyle, travel, and personal success. So with this vlog today, I'm just getting into the entire trip to Cuba. Like it was amazing. Being on the island, um, it gave this sense of reality and just being present in life. Um, and it was a very different feel from what I get here, you know, at home, um, just being cut off from the world because I'm gonna just let y'all know now, whether you make it through the rest of the video or not, your phone will not work in Cuba, okay? <laughs> There's internet parks, unless where you're staying has Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi can still be a, a little spotty. But it wasn't a bad thing either at the same time because you saw so many people, um, spending time with each other. You saw people walking along the water, holding hands. You saw people talking to each other in the streets. You didn't really see anyone looking down at their phone while they're walking. And one thing that was really interesting, uh, my friend and I, I went with my friend Sherelle and we at, went to this little store. We were looking for some cigars. And so while we we're walking, we ran into this guy and uh, he was stating how he loves American music and all that. And so he was playing some music and it was like really, really old. It was something that we listened to back in like 2006. I think it was like, I can't remember if it was Laffy Taffy or something like that. But it was just interesting to see like how the music, um, the timelines are just different because they don't have the same access to the things that we have in our everyday life on the internet and stuff. And so... Um, I know I want to kind of talk about that in today's vlog, just looking at how those are positives and negatives sometimes. And so make sure you subscribe. I'm going to be sharing in this vlog um, how we were able to go to Cuba, because as we know, there was an embargo in place and that's been a little bit more strict recently. But the way that we were able to go to Cuba, you can go too. Um, and so I'm going to be chronicling that and how we were able to do that during this vlog. So make sure you subscribe to stay updated on the countries that I have coming up. Right now I'm doing countries that I've already gone to because I'm just really getting pushed back into YouTube. But, and so, yeah, let's go and get this video going. Welcome back to Living Out Loud. All right. So first question that I'll be addressing um, today on the show is why Cuba? <laughs> um, and it's interesting because Cuba has always been a country that when you're in school, you know, having your social studies lessons, you'll hear so much about it, you know, being this communist state and um, the dictatorship and, you know, just all these negative things. And so as I got older and I started doing just more research on the African diaspora and, you know, just seeing around the country where Africans have been placed, whether during those countries where I thought it was interesting because when looking at all the other countries where we were placed, that's the one country that hadn't been influenced by a lot of um, Western cultures. And so I wanted to experience and see that when I go to my different places um, and traveling. So I've been to seven countries so far. Um, my goal is to get to 50 countries by 50. And so I'll be chronicling all of those countries. On. We are now walking through park, looking for a museum. Yeah, I was just in here thinking like, too bad pictures can't capture just like the beauty and just the feeling that you get just being here walking around. Like, shit is just amazing. And so I chose to travel to Cuba under the support of the Cuban people. And so under the support of the Cuban people aspect, you're able to visit the country as long as you're going to spend the majority of your time there um, 
interacting um, and working with the people of the country. And so it's around 80% of your itinerary needs to be in that aspect. So you can't just go, you have to actually be interacting with um, everyone there and, um, you know, being active. And so during our time in Cuba, I'm forced to stay there. The first thing is that you are not allowed to uh, show that you're in support of the government. And so one of the ways of that, most of the hotels, there are owned by the government. And so that means that you can't stay in the hotels. So we were able to utilize the Airbnb option, which was just amazing. Um, and so I'm attaching the prices for that. Down below and at the end of this video. Oh, and it did everything that, you know, we needed. I'm not very high maintenance when it comes to my traveling as long as I can feel comfortable. I'm fine with wherever I'm at. And so, yeah, it was a great experience and I liked our hosts. Um, we had a very great time. And so I'm going to get into now some of the activities that we took part in. <laughs> yes, Marvin Gaye on the screen, baby. Look at Bay Tupac. Day two, we're realizing our privilege of being Americans and English being a language spoken in many countries. Um, it's not the same here. Forced to learn some Spanish. It was one day when I was having a conversation with a guy outside of the Airbnb. He was just walking by and we were just, you know, just starting to talk. And we both were just trying to understand each other. So I'm sitting there with my Google Translator on my phone, you know, going back and forth like, okay, like I'm saying this, how do I say this in Spanish? And you know, what is he saying? And we just made it work from there, you know, just back and forth. And so we ended up having a conversation and that worked out for us. And so I was thankful for technology in that. And so that takes us into your must haves for traveling there. Definitely, if you're not a good Spanish speaker, download um, Google Translate as well as Maps Me. You want to download the um, map for the Calm Island because you won't just be able to use your phone as like a GPS as you're walking around and stuff because they have internet parks while you're out where you're able to use Wi-Fi and stuff. Unless you have Wi-Fi in your Airbnb, you won't just be able to just walk around and, you know, be on things unless it's just saved on your phone and so have your maps me and please make sure you have google translator if you can't speak english because when i say maybe 25 percent spoke english and that let me know like monica you need to get it together and really start learning some spanish if you're trying to get some work countries you know and so that's something that i've been doing now is i've been practicing on my spanish uh, to make sure that i can be able to communicate in some form of way you know and just make sure i'm being respectful you know i'm in your country you know when and when in rome do as the romans do and i don't want to go with this elitist type of perspective like you should be speaking my language like i'm in your country you know and so I want to be able to communicate with you as best as I can. And so I've been working on that. So when prepping for your time in Cuba, just go with an open mind in which that's why I'm thankful we went under the support of the Cuban people. Like as soon as we got there, um, I had our salsa lessons booked, baby. <laughs> and so we headed out for our salsa lessons, which was dope. Hey, as you can see from this video of really up here getting her little salsa in her and then we got a nice little picture of us being there um it was one of the women's birthday who was visiting as well and so it was pretty cool to be able to celebrate with them and be able to just enjoy and learn some um salsa from you know the people because i was able to actually use my salsa lessons in the future so i'm adding in right now my little cameo that i had at another place that we went to while we were there which was the art factory okay
like that art gallery was freaking amazing. Like, take a look at these pictures right now. <laughs> It was just very emotional and I felt it, you know? And so there was also a time uh, we walked through, like in this art gallery, there are so many different sections and areas where you can go in, you just hear music and this live music. And we all looked alike. All Cubans are not light skinned. There are a lot of dark skinned Cubans. And so I've had a few people, you know, it's like, hey, you're my sister. And I felt that we came from the same place. I felt that. And so the art, oh my gosh, it was just amazing. I totally recommend that you go visit this area and just be among the people and just see the different exhibits. They also had an area where they had live plays going on. And so we were able to sit and listen to um, some live plays. Um, although they were in Spanish, we were just like, oh. She mad at him. Like, we were still able to figure out what was going on in the moment and stuff. And so it was just beautiful. And then, you know, <laughs> we were just able to just experience it all. And I just loved it. And the people that we met and the experience was just amazing. Being able to experience that and walk among just everyone. We were just walking around. <laughs> So I think this is the perfect time to add in. Have y'all ever seen that meme where they're just like, we all have that one friend that's saying, oh, we could just walk. It's not that far. And like, you're walking all around the world. Well, that was me in Cuba. And I know Sherelle was like, this girl is getting up my nerves. And so um, on that Sunday, like I was, and so like on that Sunday, I was looking at the information that I saw from when we had got onto the Wi-Fi at the, um, Airbnb, I saw that there was this museum. And so I was like, I don't know what the museum is, but let's go to the museum. And so, <laughs> and so we're walking, you know, trying to get to the museum. And so while we're walking and stuff, you see these beautiful pictures that we take while we stop at the park. And the reason why we were stopping is because we were getting tired. <laughs> We were getting tired and it was hot, okay? And so I'm just like, we almost there. We're almost there. And so, y'all, we get to the building. Even though we saw a lot of beautiful, you know, places, we get to the building and, yeah, the museum is closed. <laughs> there is no museum. And so we're like, well, we got a chance to see the building, you know? And so we go from the museum and we just start walking back. I'm like, oh, well, it's only a couple miles. We can walk back. And it felt like forever. We took a break and stopped in the park. And so that was a really nice time. Um, I really enjoyed myself in that atmosphere. Um, we got to just see a lot. So, I mean, yeah, we could have took a taxi. But then at the same time, we wouldn't have got the same experience of just walking amongst and just seeing everyone and people watching and seeing people sitting in the park and like literally just talking with each other and stuff. Like... That was dope because since they're internet parks, everyone was in the park. And so I was like, I, I mess with this. I mess with this. This is community. This is what family is about. And so speaking of taxis, if you can meet a friend, meet a friend. Because when you can travel, um, if you don't mind traveling when you don't have your own taxi, the amount that you pay for it is going to be much, 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 much less than what you're going to be paying if you're in like a taxi that you know, you can just like show like, hey, I'm not from here. Of course, you're going to pay more. And so um, after we went to the art gallery, that's where we met my friend Adonis, who was the man who was who had me up on stage. Um, He helped like show around and stuff. And so taxi stuff was much cheaper after that. And so, I mean, I didn't have to pay for my taxi anymore because he paid for it, but it was much cheaper. Okay. And so I loved it and I absolutely want to go back. And when I go back, I want to go even further into the 
island and just see even more of the country and work within the people and um, just keep experiencing and seeing like what all is going on in the area and like what they have to offer because it's a country that have gone through a lot and so we did also take a bike ride through the entire area of Havana <laughs> I know Sherelle probably still hates me for that, but yeah, so we took an entire bike ride and we both were very tired. So we did, oh my gosh, it's like 10 miles, at least 10 miles. And so we both are not, we're not in shape at that time. And so our booties was hurting on the bikes. And so my out of shape self so has been on the bike for like two hours now. I can't say I'm tired because mentally I still have like eight more miles to go. <laughs> Um, and so that was very beautiful. Um, and you get to see the big Christ statue. We didn't make it all the way up to the top because we got tired and we saw that big hill. It was like, yeah, we go up there. We ain't making it back. <laughs> so we decided to just do a little bit more sightseeing. And that's how we found the, um, area with the title of the island and stuff. And we just kind of walked around and people watched and all that. And so I like that better when you think about it. But it was beautiful to just get the chance to see the entire city of Havana and get to see the U.S. Embassy and um, the different museums in the downtown area and the old Havana and looking at the new Havana. And it was just amazing. And I would totally recommend that everyone, you know, gets a chance to go at some time in their life. <laughs> I will be putting together a vlog for those travelers out there who like to travel on a budget because when looking at all my trips, I do not usually spend a lot for those. The reason why my tickets to Cuba were so high is because of the timeline of when they were bought. So make sure you subscribe for those details, okay? Um, so you could be alerted when that happens.